The most interesting thing about the four founders of Fetcher is that none of us is coming from the airline or the travel industry. Each one of us has more than 20 years of experience in totally different disciplines. Dr. Uri Yerushalmi has a PhD in neuroscience since 2005. For the past 15 years, he's been working in the leading algo trading companies in the world. He specializes in creating models that understand market dynamics, such as demand predictions, continuous pricing, etc. Shimi was the head of the financial division of Matrix. He digitized all the banking and the trust funds and all the mainframe infrastructure. Roy, the CEO, he has a vast experience and knowledge in uh, e-commerce. And I'm coming from a rich career in advertising and media. What's common between us is that all of us are coming what is called sophisticated markets or advanced markets. These are markets when all the micro decisions are not being taken by humans anymore, but for many years by cutting edge algorithms. So you can imagine that we were introduced to the airline industry. We felt a little bit like Sting when he wrote the song Englishman in New York. So when we gathered together all our knowledge and expertise, we wanted to create Fetcher as a company that can offer different kind of approach to address the challenges that the industry has today by using the reinforcement AI models to increase the airline's revenue. If I want to distill the challenges that we see that this industry has, is that the infrastructure of the current solution cannot perform in high volume or in unstable markets. Because of how it's built, the constraints, the revenue management, the RBDs. So what we've been doing for the past four years is developing a real-time high-frequency pricing systems that is using similar models that are being used successfully throughout the years in financial markets and in e-commerce. Our system, on top of the ability to continuously and very granularly price the whole network 24-7, it means routes, flights, and even seats, the system doesn't work as a black box that throws numbers and recommendation. We understand the fear, and we created our system that has explainable AI. It means that each and every price recommendation is being justified in a language that the analyst can understand. But I think that the most interesting thing that the system can do, it's because it's an aggressive algo trading system, it has a tactical pricing approach. It means that it lets our customer take advantage of the vulnerability of their competitor's rule-based system by understanding the rules and then manipulating the market in order to gain more profit. We understand that there is a need for technology, but it collides by the fear of technology. Nobody likes to make changes. They had maybe bad experience in the past, so we spend a lot of effort to create what we call a zero-risk seamless onboarding. What does it mean? We do not touch the infrastructure at all. We don't change anything. We do not break tiles. What we're doing is remotely piggybacking on the current systems once we get the data, in eight weeks, you have a running system. Now, in order to increase the trust and decrease the risk, we created live A-B testing, sunsetting, like you use the system, and once you enjoy the results, you can sunset your own systems. We do gradual scaling, all of that to deal with the fear. Since the system became live, it's showing very good results so far, both in the profitability and the efficiency side, and it's even getting better each and every day as the neural brain gets more accurate. We're an algo trading system company. It means that our business model is very simple and fair. If the airline wins, we win. It's X cent per seat boarded. I have a few more seconds. 
Well done, Robbie. Sit down in the stool. Yeah. I don't have. <laughs> audience, what do we think? You can finish up during the uh, back and forth. Okay. What do we think, audience? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Looks like we're fairly split on this one. Uh, Terry and Ellen, you have some experience with airline revenue management. What, 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 did, you, what did you think? Well, look, I, I think it's a really interesting idea and a way to approach it, having sold yield management at American. Uh, very hard to integrate, so I like the fact that it's a sidecar and it runs. Uh, and I think the model is good. Um, you know, you're taking a piece. Uh, that, that's always better than going in with a large fee up front. Uh, the question is, you, you've got how well do your models work? You've got some tiny partners. You know, is it going to scale? Um, and are you going to get somebody to take risk? This, this business is notorious for people not changing anything. So I think it's going to be very tough to convince the big players to take a risk on the core of their revenue. Um, today, we have uh, Azul Airlines that is already using successfully mm -hmm. the system. These days, two major uh, international airlines are being onboarded with a huge scale of uh, ODs that we need to deal with. I think that uh, that will be the big case. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's pretty exciting, right? I mean, revenue management's been fair-based, bucket-based for a long time, and it's ripe for innovation. So congratulations on taking that on. The market is controlled by, you know, one really big player. And so you, when you talk about your 9% uplift, is that from companies that are airlines that are already using one of the advanced revenue management systems? Yes. Yes. So that's truly impressive if you can do yes. that. Yeah. And do you see what you're doing as, as a sustainable competitive advantage versus the traditional players? Or can yes. they copy what you're doing? Are they already working on what you're doing? I think it's not a competition between companies. It's a competition between approaches. Because eventually, if you're not a DNA real-time company and you're just adding layers of artificial intelligence, it cannot work because eventually it's or you're push-based or you're query-based or you have a, a rule-based or a goal-based. And I have to tell you that the numbers that you've seen is the system still works under constraints. It means that once you take the constraints off, I believe it can be much Definitely. better even results. Learn. Pretty exciting. Okay. Uh, so I love the, uh, the, the API delivered services. I think that that is um, a, a very, very hot trend and critically important here. You know, how do you think about it? I think for me, when I look at this, I think, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume the results are there in terms of, you know, the performance for the airlines. I like the way you think about onboarding, but this is, a, this is an industry that is just notoriously difficult to drive to scale, right? You, you'll probably land a number of customers, have a decent ARR, but how do you maintain 100% ARR growth in this category? Do you have any thoughts about targeting other industrial sectors over time in order to augment your growth story? It's a great question. Our engine is agnostic. It means that we're using a cutting edge AI that it means that it's unsupervised. We don't have a feature engineering inside. It means that you can take this engine and work tomorrow at a different market. We decided to approach first the airline industry because it's the anchor of the travel industry. It means that once we'll be established in the airline industry, we will move to hospitality, car rentals, cruises, whatever, and then we're going to interline everything. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robbie. Thank you. Well done. Thank you.